Look, Magic Leap on your website says the metaverse is already here. What do you mean by that? Well, because right now you can actually see ROI in the glasses that we have. Now we're squarely focused on the enterprise, but our next generation device is smaller, lighter, faster. It's meant for the enterprise for long day wear. And it's interesting, uh, you opened with the optics um, opportunity. We have a company that we're working with named Heru that does really eye exams uh, with the Magic Leap device. And you can imagine uh, that can make uh, eye exams a lot easier to do. It can be mobile. You can, you can essentially democratize eye exams rather than going to an office and having to, uh, you know, sit on one of those those large machines <laughs> that examine your eyes, we could do it for a fraction of the cost an hour with our partner Hero on a Magic Leap device. We're waiting for ML2, the next version of your enterprise AR glasses. What's gonna be so special about them and when will they hit the market? Well, as I said, smaller, lighter, faster, but also the field of view, which is essentially the canvas in front of your physical world that you can put digital content on top of. It's very hard to expand that, and we've doubled it in our next generation device. We've also made it uh, a vertical uh, representation so that, uh, for instance, surgeons in the operating room might look down at a knee and have digital content overlaid on top of the knee and then be able to look up and across the operating room at a variety of virtual screens that you can hang there. And then we've also done something interesting uh, with dimming. Uh, operating rooms tend to be very, very bright. We can bring that light way, way down and just focus on the area of the anatomy the surgeon is operating on, which basically uh, is almost a way to turn the device from augmented reality, seeing your physical world all the way down and occluding uh, the, the outside world that is maybe too light for an operation. Uh, so you can just focus on what's important, whatever the surgeon is operating on. But what's the timeline, Peggy? I mean, Magic Leap, along with many companies in this space, have um, been criticized for making big promises and not necessarily delivering. And there's also just concern in general, in general about the lack of progress of wearable technology to really get us to that 3D version of the Internet. Well, we have devices in customers' hands right now through our early access program. We have four companies, uh, plus many more, but four in the healthcare space in particular, including the company Heru I spoke of. And they're uh, testing out the devices, getting their applications to run on it. Uh, we have a company called SyncThink that has, they do um, eye tracking analytics. So for instance, for brain wellness, the quick assessment of a concussion, they can use the four eye cameras uh, that we have in the device uh, to run through their algorithms and quickly assess if a concussion has occurred. We have another okay. company, Green Lab, that's used it um, in, as a mixed reality viewer uh, to plan the surgical pathways for brain surgery. So a number of companies that we're working with already, but we will be launching mid next year with the device. So here's a question. If I still have to put on glasses to uh, visit this metaverse of the future, is that really the seamless, usable, scalable, accessible future that you know the big believers in the metaverse are pitching? Or is, is, it, is it something else? You know, I think and we believe at Magic Leap the true promise of the metaverse is when your digital and physical worlds merge. It's not so much uh, when you're fully occluded inside of a completely virtual uh, second world, but when you can look up and see your physical world around you and overlay useful digital content into that physical world. But we do we need to have a, uh, like a killer app in order to really get there um, in a mainstream way? You know, these apps that we're working with and these companies that we're working with, I believe, are the killer app. I believe it'll change the way surgery is done, the way healthcare is delivered uh, by having really a heads up view of your physical world and useful applications that really are, are a tool to change things from 2D. Think of it, surgeons used to look at a 2D screen in front of them of an image of a brain. Now they can have the brain in front of their eyes, they can spin it around, they can walk around it, they can walk inside of it. It'll, it'll definitely change the way physicians um, are, are showing their patients what's gonna happen and how they plan those surgical pathways.
You were in the C-suite at Microsoft for so many years, and I'm curious how you see Magic Leap competing with the likes of Microsoft and Facebook, which are huge companies with deep pockets that are going to be investing heavily in this technology. Well, there's definitely enough room for all of us. We're focused very much on enterprise and in just a handful of markets right now, the healthcare space, as I said, manufacturing and the public sector and defense markets. These are areas that are already used to having displays on it. And we have useful applications and companies that are building tangible um, return on investment with these devices already. Uh, we intend to partner with companies uh, going forward. In fact, uh, the, this, the metaverse buzz has really brought a lot of interest back to Magic Leap, our feature set, our device. And so we're excited about what the future holds. We were quickly, Peggy, we were looking at the, the video that Magic Leap originally released. This is before your time at the company with the elephant in the hand that um, created all this buzz about the future of augmented reality. Is that elephant really possible someday or, 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 or does it already exist in, you know, maybe more um, exclusive enterprise circles? Or, um, you know, is the vision that Magic Leap has now completely different? You know, the vision has just narrowed a bit. I fully believe we will circle back to consumer at some point um, and, you know, do things in the entertainment space, that we, you know, with elephants in our hand. But right <laughs> now, what's possible is what we're doing in the enterprise space. And I think it's very much like mobile phones. In the beginning, they were largely used by enterprise and the size and the cost were, were, were less of a factor to enterprise than they are to consumer. But certainly over time with further silicon integration and componentries uh, coming down, we will have a device that consumers can and will wear all day long in more of a glasses format.